Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Andrei. In this video episode, I will talk about my experience uh, deploying Python Streamlit application <coughs> on Hugging Face uh, Spaces environment. Uh, recently, Hugging Face introduced option to uh, deploy <coughs> your application uh, through uh, Docker using um, Hugging Face Spaces Docker SDK. And uh, I think this is exciting because uh, with Docker, uh, you're not limited anymore uh, to Gradio or Streamlit uh, application deployment on uh, Hanging Face Spaces, but uh, you can deploy application implemented with any kind of technology because uh, as soon as you can package your application uh, into Docker image and run it as a Docker container, this means you could run it on um, Hanging Face uh, Spaces. And uh, the strong point for hanging face spaces is that it's very easy to start with. Um, you just create a space environment, you check out the repository, you add your code, uh, your Docker file, commit, and then all the build happens automatically. You don't, you don't need to mess with any kind of uh, administration tasks and uh, set up any uh, VMs uh, or whatever. It uh, runs out of the box. Uh, other thing which is very important is <coughs> when, once application is deployed, then you get um, HTTPS access uh, out of the box to your application, either it, it's UI or API, it doesn't matter. And uh, another point is that uh, when application is deployed and accessed, then all the content that you are transferring to the client is automatically compressed. So you don't need to worry about um, uh, HTTP proxy like uh, Nginx or something like that. Uh, content compression is handled out of the box. So let's see how it works. Let's jump um, to my desktop. And uh, uh, this is the uh, GitHub repo for Sparrow application that uh, I'm building on. And uh, the idea of Sparrow is to allow data uh, labeling, like uh, invoice annotation, for example, and data extraction that I'm, I'm working now using uh, open source ML models to be able to extract key information from documents. Uh, right now, I'm talking about um, data mapping da and data la uh, annotation. This is what is available at the moment. And we can go to the UI model. And over here, I got instructions uh, how you can actually deploy this uh, UI model, UI application on uh, Hugging Face Spaces. This UI uh, part is implemented with Streamlit framework. Uh, it's a Python framework. Uh, it runs on the server side and uh, it helps, it generates UI from the server side and uh, brings it to the, to the end user. And the advantage of Streamlit for ML applications is that uh, it runs on, on Python infrastructure and this means you can leverage and use the same libraries you use to prepare, transform and process data for ML uh, workflow. The same, uh, the same logic can be applied uh, for UI. The same data structures can be easily displayed on UI, manage, process and so on. Okay, so uh, what we got here is uh, instructions how to run in Docker container. And then there is a separate group of instructions how to run on Hugging Face Spaces. So first of all, you would create uh, your own space, then you clone it uh, to your local um, uh, disk. And uh, you need to install LFS uh, because if you got uh, large files, uh, larger than one megabyte, I think, like images, for example, then you, um, to be able to commit uh, those files, you need to add them to LFS tracking in order to commit to Hanging Face Spaces. So uh, this is the example how uh, this can be resolved. Then as soon, uh, as soon as you have all your code in place and Docker file, then uh, you commit your application and um, uh, then you can uh, go uh, move to the uh, Hugging Face Spaces um, uh, UI and uh, over there you get a log window where you could see uh, the status of the deployment, if it's successful or not. Then uh, as soon as it's deployed, uh, you can go also to the uh, Hugging Face Spaces uh, menu option and from there you could uh, get URL for your application and run it in a separate browser or out of the box uh, tagging face spaces uh, UI displays your application like in a <clears throat> in an inline frame with, uh, within hanging face spaces uh, UI right so <clears throat> uh, those are the main steps and then if I look into the 
a Docker file for this particular Streamlit application because I'm deploying Streamlit application. So there are uh, there there are maybe few uh, specific things related to Streamlit here. So, for example, I'm using um, Python, latest Python 3.11. There's no requirement to use it for Streamlit application or uh, to be able to run it on um, hanging face spaces. But uh, if you would use default um, uh, hanging face spaces option to run Streamlit application, then there you would have older Python like 3.9. But uh, I personally like uh, the way uh, 3.11 works because it um, provides better performance. I think. For a Python application, and this is noticeable, especially on Streamlit application. Uh, it seems like um, web request is handled uh, faster if Python uh, when Streamlit application runs on Python 3.11. Okay, then I create a working directory, copy requirements, uh, standard things, install the requirements, and then uh, there are a few. Uh, those lines are taken from Hanging Face um, uh, Spaces. Uh, developer guide for Docker SDK. <coughs> Those are required if uh, your application is um, storing uh, things on disk, uh, reading things, uh, some files from disk, and like in my case, uh, user is able to upload the file or um, user able to save the uh, some calculations to disk uh, in, in JSON file. So in order to in order to have option to access um, a, a disk storage, then you need to. Uh, grant those permissions to the user as per documentation. And yeah, later I copy all the code uh, uh, to this um, uh, directory that was created just one step above. And uh, one thing is uh, related specifically to Streamlit that I was not able, when I was executing Docker copy command uh, within uh, Hugging Face Spaces uh, Docker environment, uh, it it didn't manage to copy uh, hidden files like a uh, file with, which starts with dot dot streamlet and um, sorry folders hidden folders and dot streamlet folder holds configuration for the streamlet application so I created this kind of workaround I uh, moved um, uh, streamlet configuration uh, um, metadata to uh, config folder uh, which is not hidden visible folder and then in this extra copy step I copying um, from config folder into dot streamlit uh, folder which is uh, created uh, inside uh, inside the container which runs on hugging face spaces so that final application actually gets um, streamlit configuration in dot streamlit folder and this workaround, uh, it, it worked and um, streamed application runs with proper configuration in this way. And finally, the last command is uh, to run streamlit application uh, main script, uh, in my case, on, on port 78660, which is the default port uh, 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 from Hugging Face Spaces Docker SDK, but you can change uh, the port number if you'd like to. Yeah, so this is about uh, Docker file, and if you look into the uh, hugging face spaces, uh, it's very easy to create your space with Docker uh, SDK. You just go to new space, and over here you select uh, option to create uh, space with Docker, and then it will be initialized in a few seconds. You'll get option to clone the code, as I mentioned. Then you uh, put your own code, put a Docker file, push it, and uh, commit and push uh, the changes uh, to the Spaces repo and the build process will start. And this is the <clears throat> deployed example of um, application uh, Sparrow UI that I was showing in a few steps uh, back. So what we got here, we can open logs. You can see there are some messages uh, from the runtime uh, under container tab, under build tab. Uh, we'll get information uh, about uh, the build process, uh, like how uh, all the steps from the Docker file were executed and so on. So if you'll face any error during the build uh, build step, then you'll get uh, me error messages over here under the build tab, and you can uh, go and fix the the errors. Yeah. Then this is the application that runs in line, and there is another option you can click over here, uh, embed space, and you could uh, use direct URL. So I, I could click on that, and this um, allows to load application in a separate URL. You can copy the URL, share with other users, and everyone could access your application. 
and <clears throat> I, I deployed a few weeks uh, ago and I have a counter which shows that, for uh, example, almost 1,700 um, uh, times the application was accessed and there was no restart uh, of this uh, Docker environment, there was no any crash or whatever, <clears throat> it works great and um, it's very stable, so it's uh, also another, another uh, good point uh, related to the hanging phase Docker SDK. Alright, and then I could browse for application, someone uploaded uh, the picture, uh, I could uh, select another annotation like um, receive document, for example, and I could go over here in this third section uh, in a, a, some sort of about section and yeah, it uh, works well. Okay, so that's about uh, Hugging Face um, Docker SDK and I think it's a huge step uh, from Hugging Face to allow developers to deploy the applications using uh, Docker because it opens lots of um, new possibilities, uh, not limiting developers to deploy uh, Gradio or streamed applications with the certain versions and certain configurations. Yeah, so <clears throat> this uh, makes um, uh, Hugging Face as uh, I think default platform for deploying ML applications uh, online. So thanks for watching and uh, see you next time. Bye.